the tension in Frank Bruno's dressing room before he came out to face the crowd was well nigh unbearable. Well, you could understand it. Bruno had to pick up the pieces of the promising career that James Bonecrusher Smith had shattered in this same ring four months ago. As it turned out, the Wembley crowd were yelling for him all the way to the ring. Bruno's opponent, the Canadian Ken LaCusta. We join it at the start of a scheduled ten rounds. Second up. So the first appearance of Frank Bruno since that Sunday night in May, the unlucky 13th. When he was beaten in the tenth round by Bone Crusher Smith. And now he has to make his way back up the ladder. And Ken LaCusta of Canada is the man chosen to give him the first test on the comeback trail. Acosta has a reputation as a clown of the ring and already he's shown that it's not undeserved. Bruno, 16, one and a quarter. Lacosta in the red trunks, 15, one and a half and some two to three inches shorter. Lacosta comes with a reputation at 29 years old of being a durable boxer, not a big hitter, but capable of taking punches and going the distance. And it's fair to say that despite that disastrous night in May, Bruno has come back to Wembley tonight with the complete approbation of the crowd on his side. He got a tremendous reception when he came to the ring. 22-year-old Frank Bruno out of Wandsworth in South London. against Bone Crusher, we remember all too well. Bruno had it all his own way for six rounds. Looked like a certain winner. Still looked like a winner. And they came out for the tenth and final round. And then instead of backpedaling and boxing his way to a certain victory, he chose to mix it. He got caught and he went out. Lacosta swarming all over him, head down. And Bruno handling it coolly, trying to box him off. And this crowd absolutely solidly on Bruno's side. Bruno punching and punching again at that head of Lacosta. Only the top of it can he see. A right hand from Lacosta lands on the chin of Bruno, but he takes it well. Two men have had him down. Cummings and Smith. And Lacosta doing his clowning act at the end of the first round. Well, you couldn't complain there wasn't any action. The Custer came into him, and Bruno took him calmly and coolly and boxed him off. Not a bad opening by the big Frank Bruno. Second up, round two. Bruno has come into this ring tonight just... Uh, two or three pounds heavier than when he fought Bone Crusher Smith. 16, one and a quarter tonight. It's a lot of weight, and he's uh, all but a quarter pound, a stone heavier than Lacusta. And two to three inches taller. Lacusta is a one-time kickboxer. That's the old-fashioned uh, French style of boxing where you use your feet as well as your hands. He used to practice that at one time. A year ago in his home city of Edmonton, Alberta, Lacosta boxed Trevor Burbick, the Jamaican who's now based in Canada, for the Commonwealth and Canadian heavyweight titles, and he was knocked out in the 10th of a 12-round fight. 
And tonight, this fight is an eliminator for the Commonwealth title, the title held by Trevor Burbick. Burbick was too strong and too experienced for Lacosta. And the first knockdown of the fight in the second round. And Lacosta, for all his durability, doesn't quite know what's hit him, and he may not make it, and he hasn't. It's all over in the second round. Frank Bruno lifted to his feet. By this time, a jubilant Terry Lawless. And Bruno is back to the old winning ways. 23rd fight and his 22nd win inside the distance. Let's have a look at that again. No sign it was coming. Right hand hit him, it seemed, somewhere around the back of the head. And the second one was on the top of the head. But they stunned Lacosta and he never looked as though he was going to beat the count. Again, from another angle. The right hand, over. Quite a good punch, but didn't seem to land in too vulnerable a place. But nonetheless, he looked hurt when he went down. He looked stunned. And he didn't beat the count. The response from the crowd was as though you'd won the heavyweight title when you came into the ring. Did that surprise you a bit? Because I thought um, there might be a little bit... Sometimes it, it did surprise me, but to be quite honest, I couldn't remember, you know, because I was so concentrating on Ken Lucusta. That was a name in my brain from about three weeks ago. Every time I go to my bed, every time I get up in the morning running, I drive in my car, you know, I'm at Terry's house or walking with him, he's talking to me, but he f must think, you know what I mean, I'm well away, you know, all in my brain is this Ken Lucusta, you know. I felt the, the atmosphere in there, but I, I was just looking on the ground and just concentrating on Ken Lucusta, Ken, to be quite honest. What did you think of your own performance then? Were you perfectly um, happy with it? I was pretty happy with it. A little bit, uh, still, I still wanted to go and have a war with him instead of box, boxing, boxing him, you know what I mean? But I was pretty happy with it because I won this, you know, it's the main thing as long as you win, you know? And after my last defeat, I got knocked out and I'm glad I come back with a good, good win, you know, because it could have been a lot of criticism, you know, by a lot of people, they would have ripped me off at 22, you know? <laughs> Not even started maturing yet. The punch is still there, obviously. Well, yeah, I, I think so anyway, you know what I mean? And to take a punch is still there, but it's still yet to be proven. What, analytically, was your thoughts about the performance, or, or a round and a half or whatever it was? So did you see signs that perhaps we've got a little bit more of a relaxed Frank or not? Well, I think the, the main thing that came across was the, the little punches that he was throwing when he was pressed against the ropes, the way they were shaking. Uh, you know, I mean, this fellow's been working with Cooney and uh, Pinky and Thomas and been on his feet all the time with almost everybody else and the way Frank was shaking him up with just little tiny punches uh, I thought it was great where he was laying back on the ropes before and doing nothing this time he was laying back and throwing some punches mm. I don't know if you ever did set goals for Frank it, it, perhaps you did privately but have you now set any goals for him at all or are you just really as the football managers say t taking each match as it comes <laughs> well I look, I look at him very much as a young man learning his, his job and he's doing it under an ex, you know, extreme pressure I mean, I would think if you, if you like, and say a, 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 a cram in athletics, you know, from a year ago, who would almost go unnoticed, and now is suddenly a superstar. You know, Frank has got to do his learning in, in public all the time. I mean, there's almost every day there's, there's either camera crews or someone that we pulled or someone in the gym. We can't. The things we try and do with other fighters, we're not able to do with Frank because of the embarrassment to Frank as a. You know, where we tie legs up and tie elbows down and things like that. You can't do that with Frank, which makes it very difficult. There's Lynham doing the interview there. Frank's next fight could be in Italy or even maybe America.